Yes, indeed, we are the champions, my friend. What a season it has been. The longest NBA season ever in history. Literally a year ago, a few weeks ago, we saw the first preseason game last year. We saw Anthony Davis and LeBron play their first game last year. And many people didn't know what it was going to be. Of course, we all did, couldn't predict the global pandemic. But many people were like, okay, the Lakers are good. The Lakers are going to do everything they can to win the title. Do they have the right pieces? And when they played on October 25th against the Clippers, when they lost their first game, many people didn't think they were going to win the finals at all. Many people didn't think they were going to go to the finals at all. Many people thought, hey, this is the Clippers time for sure. And throughout the season, the Lakers just kept getting better, better, and better. Sure, they lost a few games here and there. Sure, they got dismantled by the Clippers on Christmas Day. They didn't get dismantled, but they lost. But at the end of the day, they pulled it off. They started clicking very, very well before the pandemic. They had that huge stretch of games when they beat the Celtics in a close clutch game. LeBron had another fantastic performance. Then they defeated Milwaukee on a Friday night in another close clutch close clutch game that was just a truly crazy game and that was a game that was going to decide hey this is going to make or break the lakers for sure this will prove who they are what they can do on and off the court and if they and if they belong in the finals then they played the clippers that sunday march 9th 8th or 9th, I think it was the 8th, but March 8th, one of the biggest games in Los Angeles sports history, Clippers-Lakers. Lakers didn't have a win against the Clippers all season long until now. It was such a highly intense game. Many people were thinking, including me, okay, if the Lakers don't beat the Clippers, they're going to have a hard time in the playoffs if they meet. So I was nervous that day. I was nervous, but Avery Bradley went off that day. He showed, hey, we could beat the Clippers no matter what. It was a close game. LeBron and Avery Bradley went off. LeBron had, I think, 28 points. And Avery Bradley hit six threes, most of them in the second half, just completely clutch. And boom, we beat the, we beat the Clippers. And it was truly something special to watch. One of LeBron's virtuosos. Then the pandemic hit. The pandemic hit, but before the pandemic hit, the Lakers lost their game to the Brooklyn Nets, so they entered the pandemic on a little bit of a sour taste. It was crazy. Nobody could predict that. Many people didn't think there was going to be an NBA season. Many people didn't think that there was going to be a champion crown. Many people thought, okay, how can they pull this off? Of course, with the UFC being the first sport back, many people were like, hmm, okay, the NBA was thinking themselves, how could we do this? And it was truly something crazy to see. They announced early May, okay, the season could be back in June. Mm, that's crazy. We were sitting around waiting, waiting, waiting. Then finally, in late June, it was announced there was going to be a bubble that would decide the NBA's champion. 22 teams were invited. They even fabricated it so that way Zion could be the eighth seed. That's in a whole nother conversation for a different day. But Lakers, Clippers, almost every single team you could think of was in the bubble for five months. Ridiculous. No, three. I'm sorry. Three months. Five months in the making. Three months to decide a champion. What can go wrong? Nothing went wrong. Zero positive tests the entire time. I just got to congratulate the commissioner, Adam Silver, for just pulling this off. Every single person that works for the NBA, you guys truly, truly, truly came in clutch during this crazy time. Gave us some of the best games we could ever think of and gave us sports. You guys gave us sports in a time that nobody ever thought there could be sports. And man, let's get right into it. Lakers played their first game against... The Clippers in the bubble, another close game, back and forth. Jermichael Green was making threes. Kawhi was doing his line dry baseball shots to the basket. And LeBron was just having a game as well. So was Anthony Davis. It was just back and forth, two heavyweight sluggers going at it. LeBron had the last shot, hit the front of the rim. He took it, made it, boom, game over. Clamped up Paul George, clamped up Kawhi Leonard, and... They won 1-0 in the bubble. 
Then they went on a little cold streak where nobody could hit a three to save their life. Danny Green was off. We'll get to that later. KCP was off. Caruso was off. LeBron was off. They went on a little four-game skid, which they did earlier in the season, way early in the season in like November. But still, many people were thinking, "Uh uh-oh, is this the end? Is this it for the Lakers? Can they bounce back? Can they rebound from this? And many people still didn't know who the eighth seed was going to be. Was it going to be between Portland, New Orleans, San Antonio, Phoenix, who went 8-0 in the bubble and somehow, some way, didn't get the eighth seed? Is somewhat ridiculous. But me personally, I was like, we might play Portland. I highly doubt we're going to play Memphis, but with Portland on the rise and with us being a little stagnant in our offense and a little bit sloppy in our defense... I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people that was like, okay, we're in a bit of trouble. I see us beating Portland, but it's not going to be easy. And it wasn't easy at all. Damian Lillard had one of his monster games in game one. Then LeBron and them, they just didn't look back after game one. Damian Lillard got a little bit cocky along with CJ. The whole world got cocky thinking that the Lakers would lose to the Blazers. You're crazy if if you thought that was going to happen. They didn't lose another game, won that series 4-1. to one. Then they played the Rockets in the second round, who just got out of a seven-game series against the Thunder. The Rockets won that first game pretty decisively, all right? I was not scared at all that the Rockets were going to beat the Lakers, not one bit. But that first game, that was the loss out of all the losses the Lakers had. That game was the one that stung. Because out of all teams I felt the Lakers should have swept, it was the Rockets. Russell Westbrook, me personally, he's the most overrated player in the NBA. I don't know how he gets the credit he deserves, but that's another conversation for a different day. Lakers won that series 4-1. to one. Davis went off, LeBron went off, and it was just truly, they truly put a stamp on why they were the number one seed in the Western Conference all this time. Then, Western Conference Finals against the comeback kids from Colorado, the Denver Nuggets, came back from 3-1 to one against the Jazz, 3-1 to one against the Clippers, who the Clippers, many people thought, were going to play the Lakers in the Conference Finals, but the Clippers, they choked hard. They choked hard. I'm from Pueblo, Colorado. I had to go for the Nuggets. I hate the Clippers. Nuggets, I was like, bring them on, you know? Bring them on. I know they they were going to lose, but bring them on. Lakers won that in five games with a crazy game three. Lakers were down by 20. And in literally a quarter, came back to cut the lead to five. They couldn't close it out, though. The Nuggets were due for a game like that. And it was truly something crazy, truly something special to watch the Lakers just come through like that. Come through against a team that if they were down 3-1, they were going to win. It, that was just a fact at that point. But when they had the Nuggets down 3-1, to one, they made sure to put the nails in the coffin. If you want to watch the Nuggets come back from 3-1, to one, just click that subscribe button and you can see all my videos on the Clippers blowing that 3-1 lead against the Nuggets. So we won that. Won it in the conference finals. Then we had the NBA finals against the Miami Heat. Now the Miami Heat was the dark horse of the Eastern Conference Finals. I've never been sold on the Milwaukee Bucks, but like the analyst that I am inspiring to be, I had the Bucks going to the finals. Now, if Kevin Durant was healthy, which he was cleared to play, if Kyrie Irving was healthy, which he was cleared to play, if both of those guys would have played with the Brooklyn Nets in the bubble, the Brooklyn Nets would have made the NBA finals. It's just that simple. But we'll have to wait till next year to see that matchup. I thought the Bucks were going to be in the finals. I thought the Bucks and the Lakers, Lakers would win in seven. But I was never sold on the Bucks. I thought Giannis was so overrated. I do not think he deserved at all one bit of his MVP win. I don't think he deserved Defensive Player of the Year at all. He is like Westbrook, where he is just so overrated. If he gets a jump shot, I don't care. He's not going to be good at all. But at the end of the day, the Heat knocked them out. They swept the Pacers predictably because the Pacers are the Pacers. Then they beat the Bucks in five games. Giannis was hurt, but it wasn't going to make a difference. The Bucks, regardless if it was in the bubble or if it was in real life where fans could attend the games and you're on the normal travel schedule, the Bucks were not going to win that series. I don't care what anybody says. So they won in five games. Then they played the Celtics. 
and the Celtics, many people thought would go to the finals. I was never sold on the Celtics either. I had the Heat winning in seven. They landed up winning in six. Goran Dragic was the dark horse. He was the leading scorer. Bam Adebayo really came into his own in that series. Had that clutch block against Jason Tatum. And to me, I was like, everybody's saying Jason Tatum is the next coming of Kobe Bryant. Get out of there with that talk. I hate talk like that. I hate when these analysts try pumping up players such as Giannis, such as Westbrook, such as Jason Tatum. Just stop with that. Just stop. These playoffs showed nobody was made for this but the Lakers and the Heat. I give all the credit in the world to the Miami Heat. I give all the credit in the world to Jimmy Butler, to Goran Dragic, to Tyler Hero, who had 36 points in Game 3 of that series. And... Whew, they just look like marauders out there. They look like they were playing for food at times out there. And Tyler Hero went as they went. The Heat went as Tyler Hero went. If he had a good game, the Heat were going to win that series. If the Tyler Hero had a bad game, the Heat would lose that. They would lose the game, plain and simple. So it was one of the most weird, most highly anticipated finals in history. Lakers and Heat, that's how we got there. Both pure domination, both pure basketball elation on both sides. Not many people thought we would get to an NBA Finals, let alone finish out the season. Game one, the Lakers looked like a marauder. They came out, completely dominated the Heat. Jimmy Butler turned his ankle. I got scared. I thought he was going to be out for the rest of the finals with an ankle sprain. I'm glad he fought back, and I'm glad he had two monster games in the games that he won. I'll get to that later. But at the end of the day... When Bam Adebayo got hurt, that was his fault. He charged into Dwight Howard. Literally charged into Dwight Howard. And many people were like, me and my father were just like, man, why would he do that? Knowing he had shoulder problems in the Celtics series, why would he charge full force at Dwight? I get creating contact. I get trying to go to the free throw line. But at the end of the day, if you know your shoulder is completely shot, you should not be doing anything to re-aggravate that shoulder. Knowing that you're on the biggest stage in the NBA Finals, knowing your team needs you, you're your team's leading shot blocker and your team's re leading rebounder. At the end of the day, you need to watch out for your health. I think if Bam would have just avoided that contact with Dwight, he could have played all the rest of the games because he wasn't the same after the rest of those games. I'm not making excuses. I'm just calling it how I see it. He was not the same. I don't think it would have made any difference. It just wouldn't have been the same. Bam didn't play the same. Then Goran tore his plantar. He was out. And the thing I was worried about is I want the Heat at full strength. So that way when we beat them, there'd be no excuses. That way we could win fair and square. But we dominated them in game one. Davis went off. Davis went off in game two, had back-to-back 30-point -back games. LeBron had a 32-point game in game two. It was just pure domination, start to finish, wire to wire. There's simply no other way to put it. Tyler Hero seemed to be non-existent. Duncan Robinson seemed to be non-existent. And many people, including me, had the Lakers winning in a sweep. Before the series started, I know I haven't really talked about basketball so much on this podcast, but before the season started, I mean, before the final started, excuse me, I had the Lakers in six. I'm like, look, Miami's a tough team. I told my father, I told my friends, Miami is a tough team. They defeated the Bucks. Granted, the Bucks are overrated, but they defeated the Bucks. They're a mentally tough team. Jimmy Butler has been playing outstanding basketball. Goron is the leading scorer on the team. They could win two games off of the Lakers, but they're not going to beat them four times in a two-week time span. So game three was a huge game. Make or break for the Heat. Jimmy Butler had a virtuoso. I'm going to keep it 100. He had a virtuoso. 42 points. Complete domination. First player since Shaq to have a 40-point game and not attempt a three-point shot. That is mind-boggling to me. And that just shows Jimmy Butler got whatever he wanted in that game. Tyler Hero had some big plays down the stretch. Of course, he had a snarl. Pissed me the hell off. But the Heat pulled that one out. And I'm like, okay. Okay, we have a little bit of a series. Now, the biggest game of the series to me was game four. This was a make or break for both teams. Lakers couldn't go up three to one. That gives the Lakers a little bit of a cushion 
to not relax, but to be like, okay, we could definitely game plan a little bit better. Say we lose game five and game four, it was a close game, but LeBron went off in the third quarter, hit huge threes, hit clutch threes to just balloon the lead, balloon the lead, had a 13 point lead at one point. Then finally, it was just controlling the tempo of the game and that's what the lakers did best in game three just more back and forth i thought it was going to be neck at neck but at the end of the day lakers pulled that one out up three to one i'm like wow all right one win away one to go three to one let's do it game five came i didn't watch it i had other things to do for school but i caught the fourth quarter my parents told me everything about the game Jimmy Butler had an outstanding game. So did Duncan Robinson. And for the Heat to beat the Lakers four times in a two-week time span, Duncan Robinson needed to have the game of his life. Jimmy Butler needed to have the game of his life. And so did Tyler Hero. Now, I know Jimmy Butler is not a a 20-a-night scorer or a 30-point-per-game scorer. But if he wanted to beat the Lakers, he needed to have a 30-point game. He needed to average 30 points in these finals to at least make it close. He needed to be the primary ball-dominant player in this series. I know Goran was your leading scorer, but Jimmy being the superstar that he is, he needed to take over. And in game in games 3 and 5, he did exactly that. And you saw when he did that, they won. Now, granted... In the first few games, the Lakers played the right defense on both of them. They didn't let Tyler Hero catch. They didn't let Duncan Robinson catch. They played the right defense. You're supposed to play on a shooter, and you left Jimmy on an island. And granted, Jimmy can't do it all by himself, but when Jimmy goes off, that's when Tyler goes off, and that's when Duncan Robinson goes off. I'm just saying. So then game six came around, and I hate when everyone's like, oh, Jimmy left it all out on the floor. Jimmy was talking all that shit. He wasn't when they lost, so Jimmy could keep that same energy. Just stop with that. Just stop with that. Just stop. Game six, it looked like a completely different team, and it looked like the Los Angeles Lakers of old. It looked like the Showtime Lakers. It looked like the Lakers that gave us the number one seed. They just completely dominated every part of the game. Of course, Danny Green, with that whole play at the end of game five, neck at neck, missed that shot. Danny Green, man, he just hasn't been playing like himself. When we first signed Danny Green in July of 2019, I was like, okay, we're going to get the Danny Green of San Antonio and the Danny Green of Toronto, who can make clutch threes for us that can put us over the top and help us win games. We didn't get that. We got maybe one game where Danny Green went off, and that was the very first game of the season when we lost to the Clippers that me personally, that was the biggest game he had. And of course you had the shot that he made against Dallas in the third game. They had November 1st, 2019 that helped them send the game into overtime. But other than that, he was non-existence the entire bubble experience. Danny green couldn't hit a quarter. Couldn't throw a quarter into the ocean. That's just a fact. I don't mean to be mean. I am. I feel so bad that he received death threats after this game because I'm like, look, it's just a game. We're still up in this series. It's just a game. If, but granted, we didn't want to go to a game seven against these guys. But it's just a game. And I wanted Danny Green to go off. Now, here's what happened in that play. Down by one, LeBron had the hottest shooting hand that I saw. Other than when he played Golden State in game one of that NBA Finals in 2018. LeBron had the hot hand. Everybody wanted him to shoot the ball. But he made the right play, kicked it out to Danny Green. In my belief, if Danny Green would have shot faked, gave himself a little bit more time to just relax, he would have knocked down that shot. We would have been champions on Friday night. But that didn't happen. He missed, hit the front of the rim, passed it to Markeith Morris, who Markeith then threw it away. That happens. Part of the game, it happens. You live with the consequences. You live by the three, you die by the three. That time, Danny Green died by the three. I know everything about that because I'm a player very similar to Danny Green. At the end of the day, though, game six, to me, going into that, I'm like, this is going to be another close game. This is going to be neck at neck. This is going to be wire to wire. It might come down to the last shot once again, but no. The Lakers played the right defense on the Miami Heat. Didn't let Jimmy Butler go off. 
held him to 10 points between Anthony Davis guarding him and LeBron guarding him. He had a 32-point game in Game 5, held them to 12. That is outstanding defense. Duncan Robinson didn't go off. Tyler Hero didn't go off. That entire series, the Lakers played the correct defense on shooters, on Jimmy Butler, and this was Goran Dragic's first game back. I think he messed up a little bit of their flow, messed up a little bit of their mojo, because normally Kelly Olynyk would have been the first player off the bench to to come into the game, but instead of that, it was Goran Dragic, and before that, the game was already out of hand. There was nothing much Goran could do. The Lakers were shooting lights out. Danny Green hit a few threes. KCP came back to life in the conference finals and the NBA finals. Truly spectacular. And at the end of the day, it was just domination between LeBron and Davis. LeBron was getting whatever he wanted in the paint the entire playoffs. He's the best driver of the basket to the basketball to the hoop. Anthony Davis, jump shot after jump shot, floater after floater, dunk after dunk. Truly spectacular. But I think the biggest X factor throughout this entire playoff, throughout this entire NBA bubble was Rondo. He helped save us in the conference finals, in the NBA finals, and throughout this entire playoff bubble experience. Rondo knows how to control the tempo of the game. And when was the last time we ever seen Rondo hit threes? When was the last time we ever saw that? I mean, man, Rondo turned into the Rondo that won the 2008 NBA Finals with the Boston Celtics. The complete X Factor had 19 points in Game 6 to help elevate the Lakers to win the game by 13 points. Man, oh man, we are the champions, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. Holy cow. Everybody thought Kuzma would be the third man. It was Rondo. Rondo had the experience. He had the talent. Dropping dimes every single game to Davis and Braun. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was truly spectacular, guys. Rondo's the first player to win a ring with the Celtics and the Lakers, two of the most storied franchises in the NBA, who are now tied at championships with 17 apiece. It's just a weird time, a fun time, a crazy time to be a basketball fan, to be a Laker fan. And I am just so happy the Lakers were able to win for Kobe, for this crazy year, finally something good happened this year. One of my teams won the finals, won a championship, somewhat. Something great happened that I think we can all carry over into this game. Man, was that awesome. Man, was that fun. I am truly excited to see what next season has in store for us. Lakers are the champs. Should have happened last year, but it happened this year, and it was just meant to be. If you like what you've seen, please give us a like, a subscribe. Please give me a like and subscribe. Comment on what you thought of this entire 2020 NBA experience. Please tell me what you thought about the Lakers winning the title, about beating the hometown Nuggets. Destined to happen, don't lie. But stay safe, stay blessed, wear your mask. Most of all, ladies and gentlemen, keep it 100. Peace. I'm out. Boom.